Hey everybody, we're back and uh, with this conversion of the BC-459A to all solid state. Um, it was successful. I was looking for 30 watts and uh, we ended up getting, um, oh, well, let's see, let's take a look. We ended up getting a pretty solid looking 40 watts there. And uh, again, here's the radio. And this is the uh, solid state BC 455. We've got 71, 7.1 megahertz here. Receiver 7.1 megahertz here. And uh, looks like we're getting 7.1 megahertz on the counter. And again, 40 watts. Well, the tone is pretty good. Um, I would say it's not warbling, it's not chirping. With that, we're going to uh, go ahead and uh, open up this radio so you can take a good look at it, see what kind of um, modifications we did to make this all solid state. So let's do that next. So what basically we have here is the linear amplifier that in the last video I told you we'd be using. So let's take a look. Let's start with the back here. Shut the power off. And what we have here is a key jack for the key. This is for the frequency counter. With it in or out of circuit, the output is not affected whatsoever. Um, so on and off switch, power, cord, Imagine going to field day with a power cord attached to this guy here and there's no external power supply and you're getting 40 watts out. <laughs> and uh, I left the tubes in here. Just kind of like, I like them. I like the way they look. Let's take a look at the bottom before we talk again more about the top side here. So. Of course, in the last video, I showed you that uh, the power supply was going to be this Meanwell uh, power supply right here. Uh, it puts, uh, it's capable of 9 amps at 13, 8, 14 volts. Here is the oscillator in the back. So the, uh, the tube all the way at the left was the oscillator, the master oscillator tube of Hartley design and I maintain that design. You can see I have it as a two transistor cast coated oscillator. The next socket over which was the crystal socket I'm using that to as a for the buffer amplifier. So we feed from the oscillator the buffer amplifier and of course this socket is not being used for anything. Not much not much to it there. Um, and there is the fine, there's the front dial variable air capacitor that you adjust the frequency, the output frequency. So coming out of the buffer amplifier, you see that coax down there. And that coax comes around. I gotta be real careful here, one-handed. And it comes around up through where the old tube socket used to be and it goes into the input of the RF amplifier. Yeah, my way here. So once it goes into the RF amplifier, the amplification process takes place. We come out of the RF out portion of the amplifier right here. Once it leaves the output of the amplifier. I have it going into a low-pass filter. There is an insertion loss, loss of about 2 watts. I'm not sure if that's high or if that's about right. I'm not an expert on this, so but there is about a, I'm losing about 2 watts from coming out of here. I put a uh, little LED light in here because there was a hole in there to tell when the radio is powered up. Oh, one important thing is with the linear amplifier, we kind of have a little 
and a little misgivings about using a linear amplifier because I really wanted to use the old plate tank coil underneath is the very air variable for that tank coil and I wanted to use the antenna uh, tuning unit here tuning coil for the antenna and kind of keep it more more original than uh, than it is now but uh, maybe I'll do that on another project we'll we'll see how that goes goodbye for now and see you on the next video